Hey, hey! It's Lucy with another fantastic story to share. So gather round, my friends, and let's press play to dive headfirst into a world of imagination. Timothy Pitson. Is it possible that he chose to stay hidden? On May 11, 2011, Timothy Pitson's mother surprised her son by taking him out of school for a three-day vacation around their home in Aurora, Illinois. The duo visited Brookfield Zoo in a Chicago suburb, the Key Lime Cove Resort in Gurnee, and the Kalahari Resort across the state line in Wisconsin. It was the last time they were seen together alive. Law enforcement found Amy Fry Pitson's body in a motel room on May 14. Reports say she took her own life, leaving behind a note indicating her son was safe. However, the six-year-old boy was never found. Whether Timothy met a tragic fate or is hidden somewhere, alive and well, is unknown. What if Timothy, for whatever reason, decided to remain hidden all these years? Let's say, for argument's sake, his mother did manage to leave him with someone who decided to raise him as their own. As he grew older, it's possible he became aware of his situation, maybe even discovered his own story online. But if he had grown to love the life he was living, or if he was scared of the chaos that coming forward would bring, could it be that he just chose to stay in the shadows? It's easy to think that any kid in this situation would reach out to their dad, but if his life now is stable and he's content, maybe he wouldn't risk it. Especially if he somehow blamed his father for his mother's suicide. Is it possible he just doesn't want to be found? And that's how this story ends. Now let's scroll through the vast Reddit universe and stumble upon the next fascinating post to indulge in, where the upvotes and comments paint a vivid picture of a diverse storytelling community. Which missing persons cases do you believe they truly started a new life? Which missing persons cases do you think the person really did take off and start a new life? What are your basis to back your theories? The following cases are a few that I think they could have taken off and started a new life. Bryce Lespiza https colon slash slash the crime wire dot com slash true dash crime slash the dash unexplained dash disappearance dash of dash Bryce dash Lespiz. I think he was tired of his life and tired of being under his controlling parents rule. I think him sitting at the gas station for hours was him contemplating rather to carry out his plan or not. He intentionally wrecked the vehicle to try and fake his own death. Now rather he's out there living life under a new identity or something happened to him along the way. That's the mystery. Stephen Ketcher https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash disappearance underscore of underscore Stephen underscore Ketcher. I think he felt like a failure dud to not being financially successful, nor having found a partner to marry and start a family with when his Mormon siblings all had families. I believe he left to start a new life somewhere. Tammy Kingery https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash disappearance underscore of underscore Tammy underscore Kingery. It was proven she was in communication with multiple men outside of her marriage. Her daughter believes she saw her mother on the back of a motorcycle while they were searching for her. I believe she chose to walk away from her life and marriage and run off with a new partner. It is also possible she committed suicide and has not been found. And that's a wrap on this Reddit gem. But the treasure trove of stories continues. So let's not waste a moment and dive into the next thrilling chapter. As we navigate the subreddit landscape, let's unravel tales that enrich our minds and touch our hearts. Riverside County, California Jane Doe, 1996, identified as Juana Rose's Zagal of Los Angeles. On January 27, 1996, the remains of a woman were discovered by a passerby in a ditch along the 60 freeway between Moreno Valley and Beaumont in Riverside County, California. The victim had been raped and shot in the head, and according to the county medical examiner, had likely been killed only a few hours before her body was found. Investigators took fingerprints and recorded her dentals, but were unable to match her with any known missing persons. In 2022, the Riverside County Regional Cold Case Homicide Team hired Othram to conduct DNA typing and genetic genealogical research. She has now been identified as 41-year-old Juana Rosa's Zagal of the Los Angeles area. She left behind four daughters, one of whom was quoted as saying, he destroyed my family. He didn't kill only one person, he killed all of us. HTTPS colon slash slash DNA solves dot com slash article slash Riverside dash county dash wanna dash roses dash Zagal slash HTTPS colon slash slash KTLA dot com slash news slash local dash news slash woman dash found dash dead dash on dash Riverside dash county dash freeway dash nearly dash 30 dash years dash ago dash it dash through dash genetic dash genealogy slash HTTPS colon slash slash www dot NBC Los Angeles dot com slash news slash local 
slash body dash found dash 27 dash 60 dash freeway dash riverside dash county dash beaumont dash moreno dash valley slash 3176898 slash well that wraps up this wild ride but don't fret we've got more reddit stories up ahead let's jump right into the next one and get ready to be captivated all over again amethyst doe mclean texas identified as missing arizona woman on a hot August day in 1999, a lawn crew mowing along Interstate 40 near McLean, Texas, a small town in the Texas Panhandle, made a shocking discovery. The decomposing body of a woman, dead, hidden in the weeds. She wore a pair of blue jean shorts, a dark blue tank top, and a pair of ankle socks over Reebok sneakers with lifts. The mowers called local Texas Rangers, who brought the woman's body to the medical examiner. Though unable to determine her cause of death, instead labeling it only as uncertain, they took fingerprints and dental records from the unknown woman, who was found to be middle-aged, listed variously as 33 to 45 and 35 to 60 years old, likely white, and around 65 inches, 165 centimeters tall. Jane Doe had several distinctive features, which investigators hoped would help identify her. An ankle fusion in the right leg, another unspecified leg disability in the same leg, leading to a limp and speculated to have been caused by polio, a larger bust size, extreme tooth decay, and an old shoulder fracture. She also wore a distinctive set of rings, leading to her nickname of Amethyst Doe. Despite the creation of several forensic sketches, Amethyst Doe remained unidentified until today, when she was formally identified as Brenda Sue Gessler of Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix and McLean, Texas are around 12 hours apart driving distance, though it is not mentioned known how she ended up there. Her case remains open. https colon slash slash abc 7 amarillocom slash news slash local slash decades dash old dash mystery dash solve dash Texas dash rangers dash identify dash woman dash found dash dead dash and dash 1999 dash through dash advanced dash DNA dash testing dash department dash of dash public dash safety dash Brenda dash Sue dash Gessler dash gray dash county dash interstate dash 40 dash Phoenix dash Arizona https colon slash slash DNA solves dot com slash article slash Texas dash rangers dash Brenda dash Sue dash Gessler slash question mark f beaklid equals i war zero w jesemram dash a five s b jaj six q h l one mos jh nine i cules up underscore jerry's underscore g p i z dash underscore g q four h t t p s colon slash slash us dash atlas dot com slash federal slash i forty dot h t m l your continued support and dedication have been instrumental in our growth we appreciate every like comment and share that helps our channel thrive Stay tuned for upcoming stories that will take you on even more extraordinary adventures.